Hello and welcome to a sneak preview of a forthcoming app called Audioscope. So Audioscope is a mixing and mastering plugin with the ability to compare frequency response of your tracks to reference tracks. It also has a 2D live mixer with the ability to directly control your DAW uh, in terms of the pan, volume levels and stereo mix. We can store up to three mixes and instantly swap between them. We have uh, 12 snapshots and we can fade between those. And we have a number of tools like EQ and shelf filters and uh, parametric equalizers and compressors. All these visual plugins that can be used directly on every track of your DAW from just a single interface window. So we're going to go over that today and let you see how this works. So for this demonstration I'm using AUM but the process would be identical no matter whether it was AUM, Cubasis, a Garage Band, Loopy Pro. Now you can see here I have an instance of uh, Helium and it is driving 16 tracks of MIDI and I have 16 Synthmaster Pros uh, or Synthmaster 2 should I say uh, in this uh, project. And if you look, they're all routed to this final um, master channel, um, which is going to be useful for something I'll show you later. Now, to use Audioscope, you need to add an instance of Audioscope to the end of each channel's uh, insert effects list. And uh, the first thing you should do as well is name that track within Audioscope. And the reason behind that will become pretty obvious shortly and uh, the important thing here is if you can uh, set this post fader uh, it's best to and um, it's a simple case of uh, repeating the process for each track that you want to take part in the live mix or have control over there may be some tracks you don't you don't want to take part in the mix then don't put an instance of audioscope in there now, since Audioscope is going to take over the mixing using its 2D mixer, um, it's best just to set the pan and fader levels uh, equal across the whole uh, the whole DAW. So once you've added the instances of Audioscope to each of your tracks, now the fun begins. We can open up uh, Audioscope and look at the control menu. Now from here you can uh, access every single instance of Audioscope within your mix. And it's just a simple case of selecting another instance to take control over it. So in this case, I'm going to select strings. Now if I press play, I know for instance the first thing that's going to start in this song is the strings. And we get an instant uh, um, the graphing of that audio running through that instance. I'm going to pick bass drum to compare against because I know full well that the bass drum's about to come in too. And that will also get graphed at the same time. Now this gives us a good representation of where each instrument falls within the frequency spectrum. And we can use various tools that are built into Audioscope to uh, see uh, where those uh, overlaps are and kind of do something about it. Now at the bottom of the screen we have a set of five buttons which we call toolbox buttons. These are mutually exclusive tools which can uh, be used to affect the selected uh, control instance. So in this case uh, I can add uh, I or low shelf filters for instance to uh, the strings. So I might want to take some bottom end out of those strings. And I may want to uh, select the bass drum from that control menu and add a high pass uh, shelf filter to that bass drum just to stop uh, everything uh, from the bass interfering with the mid range. So let's take a close look at these toolbox buttons and, uh, and how they function. So you'll notice that only one of these uh, toolbox buttons can be pressed at any one time and when you do it lights up or it's certainly the surround lights up. In this case we've got a graphic equalizer here and we can uh, EQ that and you can see on that button the little white bar that going through it that indicates that the EQ is active. 
So the second toolbox button is the live mix, which I'm going to come to later. The third button is the shelf filters, which we took a brief look at uh, just a few seconds ago. Uh, then we've got the parametric EQ or the peak meter, peak uh, uh, suppression. So we can use this to either suppress or boost areas of the frequency range. And last but not least, we have a compressor. Now notice these are all visual, so you just um, uh, tap and slide using the screen. Now, because we have uh, access to every instance of uh, Audioscope, we can even use sidechaining, so I can sidechain these strings with the bass drum, for instance. So looking at those five buttons at the bottom of the screen, you can see the little uh, horizontal line through them, the little white line that indicates which, uh, which effects are currently on. And we can just simply long press those buttons to uh, turn them off uh, or back on again, retaining the settings. Now, if I press that compressor button and uh, turn off uh, this view, we return to the previous uh, view, which can uh, be selected from the graph mode menu. And we have a whole number of uh, graphing modes here which uh, you can choose from, and uh, any one can be used to compare track to track or if you if you've got a, an instance of um, audioscope in your master track we can use that to compare to a, a reference track uh, which uh, is a great way to actually compare mixes so everything about this program relies on the visuals so you can literally manipulate everything over the top of a graph that is meaningful and see the results there uh, in front of you now, while these tools are handy things to have, the most important and useful thing in Audioscope is the live mix. So I want to go over that now. On entering live mix mode, you'll notice that no uh, tracks are visible. And that's because every track needs to be needs to opt into live mix mode. And we do that by long pressing the mix button. And as you can see now, it lights up. And I get a little icon that represents uh, this particular track and I can move it left to right for panning or up and down for volume. Now as we know strings are the first track that starts on this song so if I flick to the strings track and long press the mix button st the strings track is opted into this live mix. Now if I start playback you'll see the animated uh, little matching amps around the, uh, the strings bubble and then as the uh, bass drum comes in uh, we'll see the same animation around the bass drum and this signifies what's currently playing now as I said you can drag these left to right to hear the panning if I uh, set the strings at too high um, volume level you'll see that that little animation turns red to indicate that that is clipping so we need to back it off a little bit also notice that only one of these is highlighted at any one time. Uh, whichever one I tap on becomes the controlled mix. And that allows us to uh, uh, maybe switch to the EQ and make some EQ changes to that. Uh, we can then, once we're happy with that, we can return to the live mix, tap on another uh, track and then go and change the mix settings for that track for instance. So as you can see the workflow is really quick and you can uh, you can make uh, changes to the whole mix without having to leave this one window. Now you can choose to opt uh, one track into the mix any one time or you can just go go for the hell of it and uh, um, uh, include uh, enable all mixes uh, on all instances and uh, every single uh, track will then be brought into the live mix mode and it's just up to you then to uh, uh, to rearrange them and, and find a mix that you like now because we have control over uh, every element of the mix uh, we can bring up the live mix bar and uh, the live mix bar um, has some additional options which uh, you're going to find it quite useful when uh, when performing the mix or listening to particular tracks in isolation. 
So go ahead and press this live mix button and you will get the floating tool, uh, live mix toolbar which uh, amongst the things allows us to uh, select any instance and then uh, uh, solo that particular instance. And whilst in solo mode we can actually just click on another instance to hear that solo too. Now we also have control over the stereo width. Then from there we can go from traditional stereo to ultra wide to mono. It's also easy to toggle a new display mode as well which allows you to visualize the uh, stereo spread so a circle would be mono, an elongated ellipse would be uh, extra wide and so on. Now the uh, arrow buttons to the right of this uh, toolbar can be used to move the entire mix up and down in quarter dB intervals. You'll notice that there's three buttons uh, on the left which uh, are labelled Mix A, Mix B and Mix C. And this is so that you can actually create and compare mixes. So if I long press on Mix A, you'll see the mix is stored in Mix A and the button lights up. I can then uh, rearrange my mix and long press mix B and then uh, just to switch between these mixes all I need to do is press the relevant button and we can listen in real time and see which one actually works the best. Now Audioscope supports up to 32 tracks and as you can imagine this screen would get rather crowded and it would be rather hard to uh, manipulate this many items at once. So. We can actually select an item and we can add it to a particular group so I can uh, um, you know group all my drums together group all my leads together and so on and then using the filter we can select which uh, items we want to uh, view and manipulate so it's a nice way of splitting the mix down into uh, groups. Now another thing that uh, you might find useful um, is the kind of thing that MIDI Mixer did which was snapshots and the whole idea behind this is to actually uh, store a mix in a snapshot by long pressing that button and then picking a duration. In this case mix one is going to have a duration of two seconds. Now I can rename these snapshots too so it gives you an idea of uh, uh, which is which whereas the mix you can, you can actually rename the mixes you can rename snapshots. Now if I bring up the uh, mix bar I can just uh, push everything forward in the mix and then uh, return to the snapshots window and uh, save a snapshot of that. And this time snapshot 2 is going to be a single second, one second. And uh, I'm going to rename that middle 8. Now it might be that I want to see various elements being panned into different positions. So let's just uh, move a few individual tracks around. And uh, yet again, we can long press on the uh, snapshot and give it a duration. Now, all we need to do is press the snapshot buttons and we'll see them animated over the duration that we set. And the great thing is these durations that can be instantaneous, there can be a number of seconds or there can be a number of beats. But unlike MIDI Mixer, there's no real setup. It can just all happen instantaneous by adding an instance of, a, of Audioscope to each channel. Now to relinquish control back to AUM, I can actually use the power button on any instance and audio will simply pass through. Alternatively, we can use the uh, pass through button in the bottom left corner. And when that's enabled, all instances will be bypassed uh, and that reduces uh, CPU to next to nothing. And you can listen to the original mix. Now, for those of you that have ever tried to double up vocals or double up guitars or whatever, you can quite often end up with phasing effects, which uh, kind of cancel, the tracks cancel each other out. Now, you can see here I have two file players in AUM, both loaded with the same song. 
And if I play them back, both at the same time, we can hear the same song, but just twice the volume. Now, if I hit the invert button uh, in the bottom left of one of the displays, it will perfectly invert uh, one of the tracks, thus cancelling out the uh, the audio. And that's that's what happens literally when you get this out of phase kind of uh, uh, issue. Now, of course, this is affected by the mix. So if I uh, bring both uh, tracks into the live mix and I position them uh, exactly the same place in the mix, you will notice that they cancel each other out. And that can happen as part of a mixing process. And it might be that inverting one of your tracks actually makes it stand out. Now, this phenomenon can be seen when you double mic, say, a, a speaker cabinet, and you uh, you might need to run one of those mics out of phase. So that's very useful for that. Another thing we, which you might find useful is the DC filter here. Uh, when enabled, that actually reduces uh, 50 hertz hum, mains hum, and um, generally cleans up the bottom end, especially on tracks that don't really or shouldn't have bass that needs to go down to subsonic levels. Now, to monitor levels for any instance, we can always uh, bring up the, the large VU meters and uh, not only do they give you an idea of the output in either RMS or peak, uh, they also uh, show the gain reduction from the compressor. So these are a very useful little pop-up tool. Um, as, well as, as well as that, we have a peak frequency window which can, can give you an idea of uh, which frequencies are peaking. Uh, say you have um, uh, some feedback or something and you want to know what frequency that feedback's at, uh, we can use the frequency window. Uh, right now it's all over the place because <laughs> it's a music track, but uh, it's another useful tool. Now, right at the beginning of this video, I mentioned how I was sending everything to a master track. Uh, you can see this in AUM. I have uh, an instance of AudioScope on the master track. But I want you to notice that it's not included in the live mix. This is a fatal mistake. Do not include that master track in the live mix. Uh, but you can see it listed on that uh, control screen. And next to it, we also have a file player uh, with a copy of AudioScope on there. Now, that file could be a reference track. And if you wanted to compare your frequency uh, spectrum against a reference track it's very easy to come in here and set this up accordingly and then compare your bass middle middle and treble frequency response against the reference track now while I appreciate there might be some of you out there that don't uh, don't like my pink color scheme uh, I had to pick something that stood out uh, in this demonstration uh, but you can change color scheme this is the default color scheme and uh, the pink was just one of many um, and we've got some really nice uh, classy color schemes you could use uh, which I think um, will probably be more useful to you in the in the long term but it stood out really nice on the video having the pink Scope. Don't forget to thump the video, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.